thank you everyone for coming. Uh, I just flew in uh, from Bangalore this morning. And uh, while I was, I decided for nostalgia purposes, I would uh, take the local train from uh, near Chhatrapati Sivaji down to Lower Parel. And I was like, why are the rivers surging so much? Why, are, why is everyone running around with big ass umbrellas? And now it makes a lot more sense as I have realized that, uh, you know, there has been a downpour yesterday. So I round of applause to you guys for coming to the event and showing up. And, uh, you know, the energy in this conversation was so infectious throughout the day that uh, I really appreciate it. So we're going to start this conversation about storytelling for brands, right? And uh, you guys are in for such a treat. I've been uh, having a conversation with these two gentlemen for the last, I don't know, 45 minutes. And it's been like the most fun part of this entire week for me, personally. And uh, I'm really hoping that you guys feel the energy once the conversation starts. Um, obviously, we have Devarshi and we have Avi. I'm not going to repeat the introductions, but I'm going to start off with a question. And it's a very fundamental question. The creator economy, as measured in 2023, right? It's supposed to be like a quarter of a trillion dollars. That's more than, I don't know, a hundred countries' GDP combined, right? You have people from the, the remote corners of villages in India, like kids from villages in India, all the way to venture capitalists who have started their own podcasts. Everyone is in the creator game, game right now. Like there's so many options, there's so much, there's so much buzz, and there's so many fan groups for each one of these creators. Now that you have so many options, how do agencies help brands create stories that will stand out? And that's something I'm very curious about. So when it comes to creator content today, and um, see, firstly, I think in India with brands, we're only scratching the surface when it comes to influencer or creator first content marketing. Um, I think it, the conversations are still very superficial, barring a few brands that have been part of culture, have been um, moving with times or sometimes ahead of its time. Um, the young, the, the brands that we're talking about, say, let's talk about FMCG sector or auto sector or so on and so forth. They are still scratching the surfaces. It's only very recently that they've started working with creators. One part of doing great storytelling is obviously the most abused words these days in content marketing is authenticity. Um, but I believe that if you want to be in culture, be honest to what audiences truly feel about you. Uh, that's what's going to get the mileage. Um, a lot of times, brand managers we speak to, um, there is some dissonance in what and how they see their brands versus how audiences see their brands. Um, and the closer or, or the, uh, if you're successful as a brand leader to able to reduce or mitigate that gap, you will be able to do great storytelling with your, uh, with your audiences because instantly you have created a connect with them. Um, if I were to use an example in the recent times, and sorry, I'm going to take some brand names here, um, of, I, I'm not sure whether you've seen the new um, Oyo ad um, that Moonshot created. Um, I think it was brilliant. Um, they literally went head on, and very few brand managers really have the, the gall to be able to do that, um, of addressing things head on as to how we all perceive that brand. Um, and they changed it. And I think for me, for a second, when I saw it, I'm like, okay, hmm, okay, they have premium rooms available. And sure, okay, maybe I will give it a thought. At least now it's sitting in my head. Um, I've created some connected with OYO rather than not ever considering it at all. So yeah, I think authenticity and being able to reduce dissonance creates, makes great storytelling happen and, connect, uh, and connections and relatability happen instantly. I don't know. So what I have realized on the go um, is that at the end, uh, 
it's the brand basic thesis that they eventually have, right? Uh, so if they're a brand who's very big from past, uh, and they're working and doing marketing things all together, not on social media, but on other platforms, they have their basic thesis clear, as he, as he rightly stated, right? Uh, but via this, via doing influencers and all, they can get, get the feedback back that, okay, the audience feels it an opposite way, right? Um, so what I have realized with this is that, like giving a few, like the newer brands, what they are doing is they have the clarity in terms of, um, I would say that, okay, this is how our brand means and this is how we want to represent ourselves. Uh, and sometimes they take the right decisions in terms of that, first let them test our product. Let the creators know that this is why we are good at it and we are very strong about what our thesis and the premises of the products are, right? Um, and the bigger ones, as you say, as you rightly stated as well, that when they now enter the market, they also need to have the strong thesis clear that, okay, this is what we represent. We need to convey these things and then the right partners can convey it directly to the creators and help them convey it directly to the audience. That will sort it out in a very, in a very right manner and then the stories can happen in a very creator to creator, um, I would say creator to creator, skill to skill basis. Sorry, I want to add one more point to this about how can brands really do impactful storytelling? We need to realize, let's look at our audiences, because that then if you're talking to audiences. An audience online today consumes content from various facets, right? Be it emotional, be it heartwarming, be it motivational, be it sad, be it funny, be it whatever. Fact of the matter remains, that brand, uh, that create audiences do not care about a brand and its and its unidimensional messaging. Creators allow for brands to create to be able to add those multiple facets to them, to be able to tell what they want to hear or, or what what the message they want to deliver, in different and more interesting ways. Which sometimes brand because a brand has its own personality and have to abide by certain rules. Uh, by themselves can't do. And if you're going to use a third party distribution channel to talk about your brand, talk to them how that third party channel would talk to its audiences. Don't try to get your own communication or your own um, language into, into a third party channel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's something like it effectively share of emotions, right? Share of emotions is far bigger or more than show voice. So, yeah. I think that was very, very insightful. And uh, just the, the stance of the brand needs to have a little bit of gusto sometimes sure. to, to push through on the authenticity of the concept. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Uh, going on, like you said, creators, to you reuse a phrase, give a brand a voice and then the next day another voice, and the next day another voice. This is true specifically for multilingual influencer campaigns and creator campaigns, right? When a brand wants to do like across multiple geographies together. When they implement this kind of an influencer, like sort of pan region sort of approach, how can they sort of create the brief or control the execution so that sort of the brand messaging is consistent across even very different executions. Like, do you have any thoughts on that? Honestly, I didn't get your question <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, I'll rephrase. Um, one brand is trying to advertise in Tamil Nadu as well as in Andhra Pradesh. Fair. For that, they have three creators in Tamil Nadu and they have three creators in Andhra Pradesh. All of them are from different categories. They're not all comedy, they're not all fashion, they're not all travel, they're a mixed bundle. The brand wants to try this as an experiment and they are right in maybe the hypothesis of wanting to test it. But they want to make sure that the brand's central communication of the campaign is consistent throughout all of the executions. When a brand wants to do this, and this, is very, this happens very often actually in multilingual campaigns, like, what do you think that they should keep in mind to sort of get that execution correct? Um, so from my take again, in our experience, like in our experience, what we have realized is that at the end, 
that's where we come into play as an agency, right? That, okay, we assist them. Sometimes if they want to experiment with 10 different niches, we'll tell them just even if you want to experiment four niches, we know that it won't work for you, right? Because we know that it won't represent your brand right. And even if you want to keep it consistent, at the end we know that they won't be able to deliver it to you. Rather, experiment in those six niches where we have either experiment with some brands or we know that, okay, even if you want to experiment, the reasons are justified. Now, if you'll ask me what the reasons are, right? Uh, by that, what I mean is that, let's take an example of a, like a lifestyle brand uh, who are just producing denims. So they'll definitely have experiment with lifestyle category, they would have experiment with entertainment, they would have experiment with comedy, right? Now, if they want to experiment with travel, it's justified because travel subcategory is lifestyle. Travel is a lifestyle in, 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 in itself. If they want to experiment with art, art individual also will have two different type of creators. One who have art and lifestyle involved in it. So those guys I would say to work with. But now if they want to work with say like a category which is um, <coughs> say, say an AI creator who's just creating content about AI and his lifestyle is not involved. Then we would suggest that don't experiment in this, this niche or if you're being selective of the creators, be very selective that they have something which is more in depth in, in them rather than just being an AI creator. Their lifestyle should be shown by the content. Then only they'll be able to product, show your product right. If, you, if they're just creating uh, content and showing their, like the, just like shirts all together, how they'll be able to promote their denims, mm -hmm. right? Uh, now if you'll ask them to create a proper walkthrough and a movie kind of video, it's out of their comfort zone. They might do it for the money or the kind of newer collab that they're getting, but it, again, uh, I don't think so it will work out that well if it's that not structured. So, according to me, consistency kidhar chahiye? Consistency to me messages pe chahiye. You want X message to be delivered. Cool? The other consistency you want is brand guardrails, right? There are certain guardrails every brand has. Sure, we don't want to cover, you do, we don't want to cross that. And some guardrails can be as basic as, hey, we don't want any crass humor, we don't want any derogatory humor or conversations. We do not want any religious content or politically inclined, none of that. Certain brand guardrails obviously exist. You want consistency of messages and guardrails. Apart from that, experimenting and trying other genres out, at least in OML's experience, has more often than not worked out. Mm -hmm. I'll give you two examples. There was, there is a very, very popular FMCG beauty brand uh, that creates these um, onion hair oil, onion seed hair oil. Um, now, obviously, your your instincts would go, okay, beauty creator, ke kaam ke lete. Um, we'll talk to someone like that or someone in the lifestyle space. We challenged this. I'm like, why? Who do you want to talk to? Let's get the audiences. Consistency, third, uh, consistency is audience consistency. J just because you have an audience who is, as in it doesn't mean that an audience is not consuming different types of content pieces, right? They're following a beauty creator, but they're also following a humor category or a musician or someone else. Why can't a message be delivered from someone else till the time it looks authentic from them? So we worked with this, this brand and um, they had limited budget, but we said, we, instead of going to five creators, we said that, no, you do one creator national level. Pe. And we created a vlog with this creator. Um, now, I will, I will not disclose the data, but this was a consideration campaign. We were doing this campaign to drive traffic back to the brand's uh, uh, D2C e-commerce page um, to at least see how people are reacting. So it was largely consideration and driving traffic back. As per the brand, um, this has been one of the most effective creator-first content marketing pieces they've ever done. Uh, because, and we worked with a category, uh, we worked with a comedy creator here, sorry. We worked with a comedy creator to talk about hair oil, uh, wherein there was application shown, there was great content done, and humor has always worked as a category to connect with people. Um, and we used this information and it actually worked for them. Second example, 
Uh, so, uh, for those who don't know, uh, we worked very extensively with Bacardi portfolio brands across 20 countries. Uh, and we do their creator first content marketing across all these countries. Um, we built an IP for Bacardi, the, the main brand Bacardi, called Bacardi House Party Sessions. This was a couple of years ago. Um, and in Bacardi House Party Sessions, music being their core pillar, we worked with music. And the first season of Bacardi House Party Sessions, in which you may have, all, most of you may have heard the song Ud Gai came out of, from Ritwiz, was that campaign. We told the brand as to why can't you take a music IP, why do you have to take a music IP on a music channel? Why can't you do it on AIB's channel? Mm -hmm. why, wouldn't, why do you think that those audiences, there is a wall in the middle? The audience fit seems to be the right. The thing, you see data. And obviously, it was something that, oh, it was a ball that we hit out of the park and it worked beautifully well. So yes, consistency is of, in a nutshell, of your brand messages, of your guardrails, and of your audiences. Uske baat to kahi bhi jao. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I can sort of uh, maybe throw some uh, supporting insight to this. Is that some of the brands that we work with uh, in the south, we work with a lot of big FMCG companies and so on and so forth uh, for their influencer mandates in the south. And what we end up seeing is the creator initiatives, like the influencer campaigns, are always like an, an investment on an asymmetrical return. You never know which one will go viral. And specifically when the brands are trying to experiment. Like if an FMCG brand that sells like a, like a food portfolio, they are more likely to go to recipe videos, they're more likely to go to chefs. That's, that's great. And that really does a good job in communicating the value proposition. But whenever the brand steps slightly out of their comfort zone and does something that stands out, we see that the, like, so the, the return on investment is asymmetrically high. And that's the kind of thing that brands are realizing more and more, which is why you're seeing more experimentation. This is specifically true for, you know, a lot more truer for uh, regional campaigns as far as we understand. But, uh, but yeah, there's just so much potential in just that little bit of gusto. So yeah, great, great answers. Um, so uh, moving on, um, what happens is sometimes a brand is works with a lot of creators and they cycle through them and like they do different, they try different things. Sounds good. And magic happens. That one brand pairs with that one creator so perfectly that the brand wants to keep doing repeat collaborations with that creator. They want to use that, that creator as a, you know, as a sort of a spokesperson, let's call it that way. And, and the brand manager wants to do it. The creator wants to do it. The problem becomes, how do you keep that execution fresh? Any insight? Uh, I look at, uh, look at it as in, to, in terms of two analogies. I'll, I'll assist you guys as, with it as well. So one is that Pokemon analogy, right? So how as a Pokemon, like it keeps on evolving, right? From the creator's lens, creator should always look themselves as a, like a product or a service that they're providing to a brand. So when they think about these services or the product that they're providing to the brand, at the end they should also think about how they can keep on evolving so that the brand is so enticed to work with them. So with one of our creators, what, when we looked at with them is that uh, he was an art creator. He was just creating and not showing him in the content. We assisted him in terms of that, how you can put yourself in the content and a newer channel of whole brand, uh, like brand collaboration for the same brand started coming our way. Because the brand now realized that, okay, these are different ways that we can now uh, work with the same creator. So what they did is they just uh, introduced newer concepts in their content, which at the end, in, in, like, gave a brand a different view set where they were like, okay, from our lens, we can just integrate in this similar manner. Uh, along with this, what I feel is knowingly, unknowingly for a lot of niches uh, of certain categories of creators, be it entertainment, be it, um, uh, be it um, lifestyle, creators are constantly evolving because their content is as such. The good ones. <laughs> yeah, the good ones. Yeah, that is, that is, uh, that is also uh, one thing that one should look at that only the ones who are constantly evolving are the ones who are getting that benefit from the, um, and that's, 
that's what sometimes creators also forget. And that what they look at is that we, our campaign work for the brand. I give them the returns, but you're not able to make the brand aware that what more you can offer them. It's like, it's like one packet of lay, like one packet of layers that you have and you're not offering multiple uh, flavors. So how many times will you eat that flavor? Uh, so yeah, while talking to a lot of creators, I I've, I've heard their problem, but it's again like the ones who evolve the, are the ones who will benefit. Yeah, so definitely I, I, I double click that as well. But um, I, I think the question is one step, I think you, it's a more evolved question for more evolved brands. <laughs> I think the first brands ko bolo ki work with a creator more consistently. Because whenever they have uh, and have done it in the right way, um, neither does the creator feel like a sellout, nor does the brand feel unfresh. Um, and if it is done in the right way, as, as, as he mentioned, which is, you know, you can constantly keep evolving the quality of content, or quality as in the, the, how you're delivering that content is very important. Um, again, if I were to give you an example uh, from the past, um, again, we, unfortunately, I've not had many brands who want to consistently work with a creator no matter how much you push at them, it's their money, you can't force it down their throats. But um, consistency, when I have tested this, um, I worked with this one creator and a brand for um, almost three to four years consistently one after another, one after another. Like every piece we're putting, every year we're putting like two to three minimum hero content pieces out there with this creator. It had hit a point wherein people in the audience, in the chat and in the comments had started really thanking the brand for even bringing this creator in front of them or giving this creator that platform. Now, if, the, if, if audiences have started thanking a brand, that's affinity built right there. Thank you for giving this creator a platform mm -hmm. and for bringing this creator in front of us. How frequently do we see that? Yeah. As in, this is ROI win. So, yeah. I, I'll just add to his point, like the one, two, three words that he said, stated, right? One is hero, right? How at the end a creator becomes that hero product for the brand, right? And that is the synergies that go a long way. Uh, we also, um, like with our experience, we have written, like I'll summarize it in this manner that at the end, uh, they should look at creators or like the agencies in terms of that we are all working as a team for the growth, right? So when that perspective comes in a way that okay, it's, it's a collaborative growth, that's the objective. Uh, it becomes easier for the creator also to look at the brand, uh, not from a lens of just delivering two, three products, two, three like products in terms of real stories and all. They eventually lift the brand. Some, uh, and we have seen it with a lot of our creators where they started living the brand. And by that I mean that they keep on wearing it wherever they grow, wherever they go, um, where, like, and eventually in their organic reels also, uh, the products keeps on showing. Mm. And that is when the brand succeeds. And how we stated is just a tweak in it where the, it's succeeding so much that the audience is also, also now thanking the creator that, uh, thanking the brand that please keep on and keep on pushing this creator because it's con definitely his content has leveled up, but uh, the audience has been satisfied because they have been lined in that creator's journey from the past two, three years. And it's just phenomenal. Excellent. I, I absolutely love the, the resolution of the insights that we're getting in this conversation. And uh, speaking of resolution, uh, let's talk about this. There is the, let's call it the plan question. Uh, a lot of brands look at collaborations with, you know, influencers and creators as just, hey, two reels, one story, done, right? And uh, I mean, fair, I, at some point you have to put a price tag and know what your budget is, but uh, what are they missing out on? Like, what are they missing out on in terms of approach and a sort of a viewpoint towards this, you know, the influencer, the content creator game altogether? So I'll just give with an example, not stating the brand. Um, this was an upcoming creator that we recently onboarded and we, uh, he had crazy amount of potential in terms of views and the kind of, um, it's like a movie that's going on, right? How we, when like we started watching Harry Potter, so we were waiting for the second movie to like come and as an audience, we eagerly, eagerly waiting to get the first ticket and just keep on watching it. 
So that was the kind of journey that the creator was uh, living. Uh, so now from the brand's lens, lens um, again, <coughs> I guess the POC was a bit more aware or had that experience or had that budget to experiment. Uh, they logged in 21 reels, 21 shots, and four long-form video with that particular creator. So they long, they logged in a proper series, like as we in an agency term call it an IP. So we made a unique IP set with that creator, and then it got them views in like 0, 0.00 something CPV, and which is like a crazy case study for the creator, agency, and brand, um, and in in all prospects. So I guess when more of these case studies will come our way. Um, like how I have now told people, it will uh, like go on channels, so then the perspective will evolve. And along with that, I feel that, um, I feel that at the end, it eventually drills down to the fact that <coughs> when the, it's again a, like a nascent stage and the, the whole creator economy being evolved and the creators learning, agencies learning in terms of what is working, how it's working and so the risk factor will reduce. When the risk factor will reduce, then uh, we'll be so confident that work on this. We know that it has worked us with us earlier, so I can just go to another e brand and tell them that it has worked with us in the past. He these are the, these are the uh, sam like the, these are the proven data sets, and just look at these case studies and just go ahead, right? So I guess uh, those are the ones like are that how it will uh, go ahead and help people, uh, help uh, brands and creators. My perspective on this is. The question being, a reel, do story, whatever that may be. Let's look at first things first, objective care. Right? Um, how I would look at it as is, as, is it an awareness campaign or a conversion campaign? Because if your friend were to come and tell you that, yeah, uh, product dek, lele, lele. How many times will that friend of yours have to convince you to buy it? I'm sure it's not once, it's more. So does one real two stories suffice for a conversion campaign? Maybe not. Um, so, and, and right he said, right? we're in a very nascent stage. So yeah, again, this conversation is very big. You have to look at, or any brand needs to look at influencer marketing or creator content marketing. Um, from a very media lens. Media buying karne ke pehle, there is a plan that's created, a media plan, which is very data heavy. Mm. You look into every aspects of the data, basis whatever your objective is, is it just awareness and visibility or is it conversion or is it something else? Is it advocacy? Basis that you make your plan on media. What is stopping brands from doing that with agencies. Today, agencies have tools and some really bright minds that can do that detailed level of planning for before onboarding, onboarding creators. And of course, jitna shakar hoga, malab utna meetha hoga, malab jitna dalogi utna meetha hoga, but in that small capacity also, um, you can do it, you can achieve it. I was just giving him an example before we got onto this stage. If you were looking at conversions as a metric, right? Um, a, a planning team would work, a creator planning team with a media, media mindset would do that, okay, let's look at creators who have maximum overlaps in audiences. Because I know to convince a person X, I need to meet that person X on frequency. And not once, once is not gonna do the job, I need to meet that same person two times, three times, four times, depending on whatever my budget, my budget is, right? Um, so I'm looking at creators with maximum overlaps in audiences, thereby ensuring that that person X is being targeted in three different creatives from three different creators with different use cases, most likely, or messages to ensure that this, I'm being able to convince this person to do, take some action. Likewise, if it was just an awareness campaign, then I want to ensure that none of the creators on my list have any sort of overlap. Um, and then it's not a conversation about a creel or do story, it's then about what is actually going to drive potential impact. 
um, and I, yeah, I don't think brands are there yet, not many at least. Um, but I guess I'm hoping eventually when they're done floating with the entire market, they will get there. That sounds like an invitation, yeah, yeah. which is fair. Um, let me ask a slightly more futuristic question, let's put it this way. Um, we've been talking before this session for a while and you guys have so many insights as like, business models, setting up IPs, how, what kind of deal structures and so on and so forth. But let's think about either tech or business model, right? One of these things is going to become the main source of change for the entire creator economy. Like you could say maybe it's NFTs, I don't know, but basis your experienced opinion, what would you say is going to be the game changer in the creator economy, whether it be tech or business model in the next five years? It's going to be SWAS. Uh, brands do not largely, say my, keep, keeping aside the smaller ones. Um, I mean, it's a smaller one, I'm talking about the young brands, the D2C brands, who are leading a more self-serve model. They have limited budgets to be able to hire people, so on and so forth. Brands by themselves do not want to operate software. Unko hazar cheez hai jo aur dekhni hai. While you, when, while the entire industry can come and keep offering software services, ke ye hai discovery tool and ye hai marketplace or ye idhar aapko 20,000 crore influencers mil jayenge. Sure, but operate on Karan. Also, know that on those platforms, even there are some platforms which have uh, a marketplace on it. The truth is because OML also is a talent management agency, we know that big creators do not want to be out there because it is a market that's running on arbitrage. Some a creator X may charge much lesser value to Y brand over Z brand because they have a better affinity with Y brand. They don't want to put out their rates out on the system. So they are not going to definitely create a side of the business. They are not going on the bigger ones. They want an agent to do the negotiations for them. They want someone to represent them because unko nahi ghusna hai. Wo lo creative log hai, unko creative karne do. Unko pet ke contracting nahi karna hai, contracts nahi banana hai. On the other side, brands, on the brand side, they have 100 things to look into. So while these tools can be great to empower them with information and data, which is this world today, the truth is that SWAS offerings are always going to win. We are not going anywhere. AI is also not killing us. Um, that is my nutshell answer. Um, so earlier, before starting this agency, uh, we have been on the tech side of, uh, as an assisting tool for creators, where the creators could make money other than just solving brands, where they could launch their courses and like an ancillary, so like an ancillary medium for them to make money. What we realized on the go with that is again, uh, majority of the creators they don't want to be on the platform, and I like being on that side. I've realized it that uh, there are a lot of reasons that he has already stated definitely holds true. I, that time I was against agencies, I used to think that why agencies are not let, letting the creators. At the end, when I started representing the creators in our talent management wing, we realized that it definitely doesn't make sense for the creators right now to be on the platform as a listed entity. And while then analyzing those platforms, which are like the few ones that are existing in the ecosystem currently, eventually they are they're, they also on the back end are like a human-led service thing only. Like it's just a tech on top of it, but at the back end, it's, there's no difference between like an agency like we are, right? We can also make a, like a, a good UI where the listings are there, but it's no different from an Excel sheet and that UI, which is on a UI platform, right? Uh, the main thing, uh, definitely a lot of assisting tools can help, which is in terms of how qualified data can come into play, where as the campaign, execute on that like that particular point of time so if i need if i'm if i'm given a time period when i'm the brand and the agency are just in the process and the creators are also in the process of executing the campaign then the main thing there is that the campaign needs to be executed 
It's not about understanding the insights, right? So how you said that a creator needs to be used again, right? Now, just imagine that we are working with 10 creators. And out of those 10 creators, while executing the campaign, and he'll agree with it, that it's, it's, such, it's such a time-bound thing, right? The objective P, P0 for everyone would be to execute the campaign. So when you're executing the campaign, and just imagine one creator real shot up. So the brand will get, will be aware of it after two days or like after the campaign is executed and the time is gone. But if the brand is being aware of, like it's be, being made via assisting of the tool and the agencies as well, what we can make the brand aware is that it's this, this creator is booming. Let's tap on more. Let's put a few more stories. Let's do one more reel, right? That are the ways then the tech will assist. But other than that, I feel currently because the pie is getting bigger, uh, brands are entering in the market. The current ones who have entered in the market are evolving. Uh, creators are understanding that how they need to cater to the brand. Agencies are understanding what more and what qualified and like in a very qualitative way they can assist a brand. So there are so many things that initially need to be solved and then use the tech because right now Excel is helping. So I don't think so. It's, it's a lot to be needed. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. This has been very enlightening. And thank you for the audience. I noticed the pin drop attention. And I really appreciate an audience that really zones into a conversation that is as good as this. So thank you so much. Good a round of applause to these guys. Thank you. And to you guys. Thank you.